Welcome everybody to the course on uh, dynamics and control. My name is Pedro Albertos from the Politecnica University of uh, Valencia in Spain. And we are going to deal with uh, module 4, control system design. And in particular we are uh, going to consider a complex uh, control systems. So uh, the general framework of the course, you can see the modules. And in the previous uh, sessions we have seen uh, control systems design, the control systems structure and the parameters uh, tuning. And today we are going to consider some uh, structures which are a bit more complex, not uh, too much, but a bit more complex. And we will see in which way we proceed to uh, design the control. <coughs> so, uh, in the previous uh, sessions we have seen the basic uh, structures, basic uh, control structures, the open loop control and the closed loop control, the single loop uh, control. And we have seen uh, the characteristics of these uh, arrangements, of these uh, structures. For instance, if we consider the <coughs> open loop control, we know that the uh, control is based on the process uh, model and also the disturbance model, in such a way that the ideal control uh, can be achieved by generating the control by this expression. And what that uh, means? That means that for tracking control, we need a perfect knowledge and a feasibility of uh, the inverse of uh, J in such a way that we can implement the uh, ideal control. And if we want to uh, cancel or reject the disturbances for regulation, we need a, a perfect uh, knowledge and a feasibility of uh, the inverse of uh, J, the uh, transfer function or the operator of the disturbance, and also uh, to have access to the disturbance AP. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> in the case of the closed loop control, we have seen that uh, we need a sensor and we are um, feedbacking the output and then uh, the general expression of the output can be uh, expressed by this uh, formula where you have the output uh, as a function of the reference, the disturbance and the noise. And the characteristics of these arrangements is that we need a good feedback. We need to have uh, access to variables and we need to have a uh, good sensors. And if we use a uh, high gain, K, in the controller, then the output can be approximated by this expression and you see that we cancel the effect of the disturbance and the output uh, is uh, proportional to the reference in the term F over H. So F and H should be uh, good uh, uh, controllers and good uh, sensors. But we have the noise added at the output. We cannot uh, avoid the noise. So <coughs> also uh, using high gain we have seen that uh, there is a risk uh, of uh, instability. So we cannot in increase the gain as much as we would like because we have this risk. So let's uh, see in which way we can improve the, the previous uh, control structures. For instance, in the case of the uh, open loop, we may have a virtual sensors. What is a virtual sensor? We have a sensor, a typical sensor with measurement, and we uh, have seen that it introduces uh, a noise. So this is the sensor, <coughs> and then the sensor introduces a noise in such a way that the output, the measured variable, is corrupted by the noise. So uh, we want to have a virtual sensor, which is a, a dynamic system, uh, based on the model of the process, and from the control action, the input, and the measure, we uh, can uh, elaborate and estimate internal variables, filtered uh, outputs, we can estimate also the disturbances, or we can estimate any other internal magnitude. So this virtual sensor uh, allows us to uh, measure, in a virtual sense, some variables which are not accessible directly at the output. <coughs> so we can reduce the effect of the measurement noise. We can get a richer information from the plant because we can estimate some internal variables and we can also uh, estimate some disturbances. Based on these uh, different uh, applications, the virtual sensors are also called in the literature as estimators, 
because we can estimate internal variables, observers, because we can access in, in brackets, access to some internal variable, or filters, because we can uh, reduce the effect of the noise. In the case of the uh, closed loop control, we have seen that the basic uh, controller is a PID. The PID, uh, you remember, is uh, in this way, uh, we can improve this PID. Why? Because the derivative uh, is uh, very large if the input uh, changes uh, suddenly. So we can filter the derivative or we can have the derivative of the output but not uh, the derivative of, of the input. And also the integral term, the integral term if it's acting for a long time can be uh, increased and distort the behavior of the plant. So we may have a limited integration, what is called the anti-wind up, and we can also have a reset control, which is uh, that from time to time we are putting the integral to zero. <coughs> so these are two um, uh, different approaches to improve the basic uh, control uh, structures, the open loop, the feed forward, and the closed loop, the feedback uh, control. So let's see now uh, some other uh, more complex uh, control structures. You remember that we mentioned about the uh, cascade control. Is in this case we have uh, the system decomposed into sub processes with some disturbances, and we can uh, access to uh, some information be uh, which is here uh, before the output. So uh, if we uh, use this measurement we can try to improve the behavior of this uh, sub-process. So we can have this uh, structure that we uh, named as a cascade control. So the slave controller will be designed as a PID in the same way that we did before. And this uh, PID will uh, try to make faster the internal sub-process and reduce the effect of the inner uh, disturbance in such a way that the uh, inner loop will be faster and without uh, much disturbance. And then the master controller could be also another PID controller uh, in such a way that the inner loop is considered as uh, faster, as I said before, and without disturbances. So we can achieve by this uh, second PID uh, the desired closed loop behavior, the reduce the effect of the disturbances in the second sub-process, and also to allow uh, for tracking. So this may be extended to a full set of uh, variables, not only two, like in this picture, but um, as many internal variables as we can uh, access, or using the previous uh, uh, virtual sensors, we can estimate. <coughs> Another uh, typical uh, complex control structure is the model uh, predictive control. You remember that when we de define the PID, we said that the control action is based on the current value, the past value, and the future values of the error. And the past value were, uh, was uh, resumed as the integral or the accumulation, and the derivative is just the increment of the error. Well, <coughs> assume that we have uh, this uh, behavior. This is the reference we want to follow. This is the uh, trajectory of our uh, system, our plant, and this is the control action that we have been applied. Then uh, the model predictive control is trying to determine which are the uh, control actions in the future in such a way that the future uh, behavior is uh, closer to the uh, reference. And this can be expressed by uh, an index like this one which is uh, penalizing or is weighting the difference between the reference and the mm, output or the state uh, by this uh, weight and also the uh, changes in the control action in such a way that we are minimizing this. As you can see here, we are also using the past value uh, of the information because uh, the predictive uh, output, the predictive output is based on the past values and the control actions that we have applied. So uh, this, is, this can be interpreted as a more sophisticated controller taking into account the current, the past, 
and the future value of the error. <coughs> Another uh, approach or structure is uh, adaptive control. Uh, most of the controllers that we have been discussing till now, they are based on the model of the process. So, but what if we don't know the model of the process or the process is changing? Then we may have a identification of this model using the input and output of the process we can uh, identify the, the model and based on this identified model we can compute the, um, parameter, the controller parameters and then uh, modify these controller parameters in such a way that uh, we have two loops now one loop is uh, the, um, the, the feedback loop here as uh, before and we have another loop here which is changing the um, controller parameters. In that case this is uh, <coughs> uh, identifying the model and then computing the control parameters. Another approach also which is uh, called uh, model reference uh, adaptive control we have this plant and we want this plant to behave like, like a model. This is the reference model. And then uh, we have the output of this uh, reference model and we compare this with the output of our plant and based on the error we can compute the controller parameters, adapt and then change. Mm, you can see that here we are not interested in the model of the process, we are just interested in changing the controller parameters in such a way that the behavior of the output is similar to that of the uh, reference model. So there are many other uh, advanced control systems that we are not going to uh, study or we are not going to describe. Uh, Nonlinear control. Most of the controllers we have uh, seen here, they are based on a mo linear model of the plant. Uh, if the plant is nonlinear, then we can we should derive a special uh, nonlinear uh, controllers. Or we may have a robust control when the control is good for different models of the plant or we may have networked uh, base uh, control when the uh, control is not directly connected to the plant but uh, connected through internet or through a network. Uh, intelligent control when we are using artificial intelligence uh, tools, coordinated control, hierarchical control. So many other options that um, I suggest that you can in the future have a look and study. So what have we seen today? Well we have seen uh, more complex uh, control systems other than the simple feedforward and feedback and we have seen the feasibility of the PID, the multi-loop uh, control, the model predictive control, the adaptive control and um, also virtual sensors to improve the uh, information we are getting from the plant. Then uh, there are all the solutions we have seen are simply uh, implementable solutions but the computation could be complex. So for most of these uh, activities we need uh, to use mathematics. So what is next? Well if you will have a look at the modules the next will be the control uh, benefits, what we are getting from the control. And um, well, that's uh, all for today. Uh, thank you for your attention.